Um. Ooh. All right, I'm going to um, go over again some of these technical points on the uh, spin one fields. Um, so basically, what we have is uh, these are four by four matrices. There are three of them because A is uh, a generator of the rotations. So these are the generators of the rotations uh, in the 4x4 four four representation of the Lorentz group, which is the sort of standard representation that we um, that you learn about as sophomores in college. Uh, these J's are the Hermitian matrices that you learn about in quantum mechanics classes for um, states of spin j. And so these are 2j plus 1 by 2j plus 1 dimensional matrices, and there are three of them. A goes from 1 to 3. So these are the uh, uh, rotation conditions that um, were derived earlier uh, in order for the field to transform properly under Lorentz transformations and translations. And in particular, well, let's see, do we need, let's see, I'm not really sure what, what actually. Um, If we go to the case of i equals zero, then what we have is some s bar u zero of zero and s bar j j a s bar s equals, and now this is a sum, but it's j zero here, but this is zero, so all that is zero. And similarly, minus s bar v zero of zero and s bar j star j zero. So in fact, um, okay. So these are the equations that we get for. setting i equal to zero in these equations. And now we get a conclusion uh, sort of immediately, namely if we multiply from the right by the j matrices uh, so that we get some s bar and s u0, 0, zero s bar j a s bar s J A S S prime. This just gives us summing over A and S. This just gives us J J plus one delta S bar S prime U zero of zero S bar. And since we're summing over S bar, this just gives us J J plus one u0, 0, 0, s prime, I guess. And um, we're summing over a as well. So what this tells us is that if j is greater than 0, u0 zero has to be 0. If j equals 0, then u0 is arbitrary. You can do the same thing with the, um, with the uh, v's. You just multiply by the j uh, by j star, and um, you get a, a similar conclusion. So we have then that the that if the spin is zero, u zero and v zero are non-zero. If the spin is positive, u zero and v zero have to be um, zero. And the next thing, though, is is um, trickier. 
Um, what we do is this. We write jj plus 1 ui of 0 and s prime will turn out to be. So we're doing the same thing. We're summing over s bar, s, and a. And here we have ui of 0 s bar j a s bar s j a s s prime. So this times this is this j j plus 1 times the chronica delta. So that kicks out that. Um, on the other hand, we know over here by the rotation conditions that if you have a u times j, you get a script j, which is the Lorentz matrix. So this is actually equal to a sum of script j a i k u k zero and s times j a s s prime. And now when this hits this again, you get a second uh, Lorentz matrix. So you wind up with j a i k j a k l u l of zero and s prime. And now this, um, well, what are these script j's? These are four by four. These are three four by four matrices. But as I said to you uh, before, they they are basically 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then three 3x3 three three matrices, and these 3x3 three three matrices are the R's that I talked about um, early, uh, weeks ago. Anyway, they're in the class notes. And consequently, this gives you JJ plus 1 again, but JJ plus 1 for these 3x3 three three matrices, which are what we call the j equals 1 case. So j is 1. And so this is j, which is 1. j plus 1 is 1 plus 1. So that's 2 times u. Um, uh, it turns out to be, well, delta i l. So this is u i of 0 and s prime. And uh, so now if we look at this, which, let me see if I can, there's a small eraser. I see one way down here. Oh, there's two of them back there. All right, no, that's, that's okay. I'll just grab this one. Um, so uh, using the uh, grammar school arithmetic here, we get a two. So now if we compare this with that, we see j, j plus 1 has to be equal to 2. Uh, and so that is uh, spin. Uh, that means that uh, we can represent a spin 1 particle On the other hand, if j is greater than 0, then uh, the ui's for i equal 1, 2, 3 can be non-zero, but u0 has to vanish. So we have two cases. We have u0 and v0. This is a spin 0 particle. And uh, u vector, v vector, spin 1. So that's what we deduced from this. There are online notes which I've improved. Can I use your thing? Uh, thank you. Uh, so we're really talking about spin 1, and spin 0, and spin 1. So let's go to the simpler case. Is that a question coming? Well, yeah, so, so the zeroth component of this? Matrix for this field describes spin zero. Yeah, right. V, U and V have four components. Okay. 
And yeah. what we found out is that if um, that you can either have j equals zero, and u0 and v0 non-zero, but then if you now look at this equation here, if j is zero, this tells you that the ui's have to be zero for, the, for i equals one, two, three. So, so u0, v0 not equal to zero, u, v equal to zero. Here, u0, v0 equal to zero, u, v not equal to zero, spin one. So that's what we deduce from all of this. That's, we deduce all of this from that, which really comes from these two equations. Let's go to the spin zero case first. So the vector part of u and v vanish, vanishes, and um, u zero and v zero are non-zero. We set them arbitrarily like this to be i square root of m over two v zero minus i square root of m over two. And then we, we, then the boost conditions, which, um, all right, I can maybe write the boost conditions here. Just to remind you of the boost conditions. The boost conditions are ui of p and s is square root of m while there's another hypo. So that's the standard Lorentz boost matrix 4x4 four four on uh, UK of 0 and S. And Vi of P and S is square root M over P zero L P I K V K of zero and S. Can I borrow your pencil just for a second? Do you want a pen? Does that have a spare? Do you have an extra yeah. writing device? Thank you. The thing is, there are just so many subscripts and symbols that it's hard to get them all right. Um, I have a question. Yeah. So, uh, in Weinberg, whenever he writes these, like, e zero, zero is i squared m over 2, he says he does that so that the fields are properly normalized. And I don't think we ever talked about what it like how we normalize the fields? Is it, do we, do we use like a trace center product? Because the fields are operators at the end of the day, right? And so just performing the integral isn't going to tell you whether or not it's normalized, right? So, so what else do we need to do? Do we take like well, a Well, okay, product? okay. What we, what we want is we're imitating, field theory is imi an imitation of this aspect of quantum mechanics. And so when you have the commutator of the field with its adjoint, you want that to be a delta function, i times so a delta function. Yeah. Okay. All right, so um, using these boost conditions then, we start from just, this thing is just, just has a zero here. 
this thing takes this into a, a P basically, and um, this I'm a little confused as to why I would have thought that the, this thing should be inverted so that the square root of angle cancels. In any event, um, the I lost my place. Um, yeah, it was on this other page here. Okay, so ui then of p is i pi divided by the square root of 2p0 and vi of p is then minus i pi, well this i is square root of minus 1, square root of 2p0. Uh, L of P, of course, takes K to P mu. Um, the U that we're starting with is. Yeah, the, the K was M0. It takes M0 into P mu. This is just a square root of M. And so we need an extra square root of M for this to happen. And then the P0 comes in as an inverse. OK, so that's how the actual factors work. The point then is that the four component field is just a derivative of a scalar field. So we can write phi i of x as simply d i of phi of x, and this is then an integral dqp by q 2p0 i p i a of P, E B I, P X, minus I, P I, A dagger of P, U minus I, P dagger X. Okay, so that's, that's what, what uh, that's the vector field that's just a derivative of the scale field. And, um, Again, I'm using Latin indices to uh, indicate things that go from 0 to 3. And when the index is just spatial, I guess I just mentioned it. I don't know a good way to do these things. Um, the right way may, might, the, probably the best notation is to, ha is to use the Fortran notation. In Fortran, by default, the letters I through N are taken to be integers unless they're defined to be something else. And all the other letters of the alphabet are, by default, real. And um, so I think a nice notation might be I through N is uh, spatial, and the other Latin letters represent 0 to 3. That's probably what I should have done, but it's, it's a little late. Um, maybe I should adopt this notation in this. OK, so now let's go to the to the uh, to the case where u0 and v0 vanish, and but the vector parts 
U, UI for I goes from 1 to 3 are non-zero. And this represents spin 1. And now um, the rotation conditions. Let's go to the back to these rotation conditions. They look like this. And we can say uh, that A is 3. And the rotation conditions then are that here, let me, let's see, if we say, okay, this is a little tricky. We're going to set A equal to 3. If we set A equal to 3, and we're going to set S equal to 0. If we set A equal to 3 and S equals 0, then this side of the equation is 0. Because J3, we're now at spin 1. J3 is just 1, 0, minus 1. So if we set S equal to 0, we're in row 2. And row 2 is strictly 0. So the left-hand side of these two equations for the spin 1 case vanish uh, for S equal to 0 and A equal to 3. That means that we have two equations, script J3, IK, UK, 0, 0, is equal to uh, J3 on, well, I could write it as J3. Anyway, it's the, it's the matrix J3, so if you want J3, I, K, U, K, 0, 0. Right, okay. Um, and the same thing for V. I just re-express the J3 in terms of R. So this is what we're looking at. And if we if we now write this down, we see that J3, let's use matrix notation, J3U is so 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 minus I 0, I 0, 0, 0. 0, 0. And now what is, what are U and V? Well, U and V uh, have nothing here, and we want to see what must their X, Y, Z components be. And what we see is that this is 0. That was what that equation was telling us, that it's 0. So this has to be 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, well, this clearly tells us then that um, if we do the multiplication, in fact, what I should have done was say we want it to be 0, 0, 0, 0. And now, if we do the multiplication, what we get is um, minus i y i x 0. <coughs> so that means that x and y are 0 and z is arbitrary. So that means then that the vectors, um, that the zero spinners, ui and vi for, S, for spin zero are just zero, zero, let me get this straight, zero, one, 
So this is this is zero, one, two, three, and um, we throw in a normalization factor one over root two m for the reason that you care about. All right. So that's that's our um, that's what the spinners are at zero, and. Well, that's, that's what the spinners for spin zero are at zero. The z component, z component of the spin zero are at zero. So it's spin one, but the z component equal to zero. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's special about these things? It's what's special about what? Z. Um, well, there's a state law saying that we quantize in the three <laughs> area of and um, uh, and and in the three direction you see J3 it's J3 that we're diagonalizing here Now we want to learn about the other components, and so to do that, we look at J plus, and it turns out, as you know from quantum mechanics, that this is, of course, J plus, J1 plus is J1 plus I J2, spin 1, and this is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, and j minus 1 is root 2 times 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. So those are the matrices that we're going to use, and in terms of them, we can rewrite the rotation conditions. And the rotation conditions for the new spinners are sum over s bar ui of 0 and s bar and, and now you see if you, if you remember what those conditions were they were for a specific j, j1, j2 or j3 we're now going to take a linear combination of two conditions j, the j1 condition plus i times the j2 condition and that gives us j plus or minus 1 s bar s. And on the right hand side, we have a sum over k strip j plus or minus i k u k of 0 and s. Where again, of course, j strip j plus or minus is j1 plus or minus i j2. These are four by four matrices, but they have, as I said, zeros in column zero and row two, or column one and row one. Okay, now, so this is the condition for the u, but the condition for the v, remember, has j star in it. And now, if we were to take, if we take the J1 equation plus I times the J2 equation, we get um, J minus J plus instead. In other words, J star 1, 1, plus or minus I J star 2, spin 1 is, well, J1 is real. I'm sorry, I didn't write, where are the J1s and J2s? Did I write them down somewhere? No. Okay, I didn't write them down. Let me write them down for you just to remind you what they are. They are in the notes. J, uh, J1 is 1 over root 2 
0101010110. And G2 is 1 over root 2, 0 minus I0, I0 minus I, 0, I0. So when you take J1 star, nothing happens. But when you take J2 star, you're flipping the sign. So this is actually J1, 1, minus a plus I, J1, 2, which is J minus a plus 1. So in the spin, so in the, for the um, Vs, or as I call them, the anti-spinners, um, we have uh, a different equation, namely what we have is minus the sum on S bar VI of 0 and S bar G1 minus or plus S bar S is equal to a sum on K strip J plus minus IK DK 0 S Okay, so we have two different equations. All right, now let's analyze this equation for the U's and this equation for the V's. The equation for the U is UI sum on S bar J1 plus S bar, and again we're going to uh, set S equal to zero. So we have a zero here. Now, if we're setting, if we're talking about J plus, J1 plus, and we go to, we set the second, we set the second index equal to zero, that means we're dealing with column one, column, the middle column. And the only non-zero one is for row one. So that means that this projects out ui zero one. That's what this sum over s bar is. But times square root two. And now we have then sum on K, J plus, we're, oh, we're also choosing the plus sign. I forgot to say that, but we're choosing the plus sign. I, K, U, K of 0, 0. And now, what is J plus? I K. Well, strip J plus. Well, we have to know what um, what the J's are, and they're actually in the notes. Yeah, I I put them in the class notes. Yeah. Um. So we get like a J minus the J plus minus goes to J minus plus. When yeah. We go to B. But the, the I don't know what that symbol is, but the weird squiggly the four by four Lorentz matrices. They stay plus minus? Is that? Because there's no complex conjugation. No Look complex at the equations up there. Oh, I see. Okay, I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me. Um, these are uh, Well, maybe I'll write them down. Let me. Let me, let me say that the I printed out in the class online notes, J1, J2, and J3 are three 4 by 4 matrices. You can look at them. They're in, I don't know, equation 80 or something. If we now take J1 plus IJ2, 4 by 4 matrices, what we find is that this thing 
is the four by four matrix zero 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 minus one zero zero minus i one i zero and we already know what this is. This is 1 over square root of 2m. And it's a 4 vector to 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so this gives us this gives us a statement that ui 0, 1 is 1 over root 2 times this. Or ui 0 minus 1 is 1 over 2 square root of m, 0, 1 minus i, 0. That's the product of this times that is, is in fact exactly that. Shouldn't it be negative 1? What? Shouldn't it be negative 1 in the vector? Yeah, you're right. It should be a negative one. Um, all right, so what? All right, let's think about this. I have plus one in the notes. And yes, no, I have minus one in the notes. I skipped a line with my, I put my thumb on the wrong line. You get two candies, though. Correcting me is always worth two candies. Question is just one candy. Campus. All right, so that's what we wind up with um, for the U spinners. And remember, U0 is 0. So now, for to figure out, so we figured out what U0 spin up is. What is spin down? Well, for spin down, we go back to the rotation, we go back to this condition, we set S equal to zero and we choose the minus sign. And so what we get is sum S bar UI zero S bar J minus one S bar zero. And for the same reasons before, well, let's let's actually do it. J minus, where we now go to uh, S equal to zero, which just means we're dealing with um, again the middle column. But now the only one that comes that's non-zero is the last one, which is minus one. And so this gives us root two ui of 0 minus 1, and this is script j minus ij uk of 0, 0. And now if we look at what script j minus is, oh, it is, I'll just write in the non-zero part. 1 minus i, 0. In fact, we only care about the last column because that's the only part that contributes. Like this, from this. And so this is um, 1 over square root of 2m, uh, 0, 1 minus i, 0. And so this gives us the rule ui of 0 and minus 1 is 1 over 2 square root of m, 0, 1, minus i, 0. Wait, Kevin, should that also be a minus 1 in the ui over there then, in the argument of the ui? Because it seems like you've done it for the minus 1 place. Yeah, give me that again now. So in like the ui, so you found here it's like ui 0 minus 1. And over there it's like you also found it for ui 0 minus 1. 
You're saying you're saying that this is different from that. What? I'm, I'm not quite sure. There are so many letters on the board. I don't know what you're referring to. So it's like the period of ui zero minus one, right? And that's what you found this for. And then over there, which is a different relation, but it's it's like you, you also wrote ui zero minus one. Oh, this is this should be plus. Four. Okay. That's because my thumb was in the wrong okay. place. Yeah. See, it's this thing right here. Yeah. Okay. All right, you get another, you get two candies. All right, we're again in crisis mode for candy. Um, I only have two candies left. There are just more questions than I'm used to, which is fine. As long as you brush your teeth. Okay, now we go to the V-spinners. And because the V-spinners are like this, the condition for V-spinners is this. So this is the condition we're going to be looking at. We're going to get, again set, we're going to first, to first set, choose the minus sign and S equals zero. And then what we get is minus sum S bar VI of zero S bar J minus S bar zero. And okay, now we have to go to J minus. Well, this is what we just did. J minus column zero, only the minus one occurs. And so this gives us minus root two vi of zero minus one. And this has to be script j plus i k vk of zero, zero. And now, again, I only need to write the last column. So it's zero minus one minus i zero. One over square root of two m zero, 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 one. And this tells us then that vi of zero and minus one is one over two root m zero, one, i, zero. Now, similarly, we go back here, we choose the plus sign, set s equal to zero, here, s equals zero, only the one contributes, and we get the equation that minus sum s bar i zero, s bar plus s bar zero, and this is minus square root of two, v i of zero, one, and then it's j minus, on V, and the last column again is 0, 1, minus I, 0, 1 over root 2 M, 0, 0, 0, 1, and let me just skip to the end, so the answer is V, I of 0, and 1, is 1 over 2 root M, Zero minus one i zero. Okay, so those are then the spinners at uh, zero momentum. And now we apply the boost conditions to get the spinners at non-zero momentum. And I guess I'll go to the whiteboard, but since we have a half hour left, maybe I will have the board. Well, the thing is you may need some of these equations, so maybe it's a little early to erase the board.
So what the boost conditions tell us is that u i of p and s, in fact, it turns out if you can put them all together by saying u i and v i star plus p and s. I skipped something apparently not. Is square root of m over p zero l i k of p. This is the standard oops Lorentz transformation. U k of zero and s. And we're going to call this e i of p and s part of a factor of root 2 p 0, or equivalently ei of p and s is lik of p ek of 0 and s. And these e's are orthonormal vectors, and uh, e 0, 0 is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. E 0, 1 is minus 1 over root 2. Zero, 1, I, 0. And E 0 minus 1 is God, I don't know why we have a minus and a minus. Did I make a typo here, or is this last one? So somebody, somebody check in Weinberg to make sure I've got this right. In my notes, I've got this. Two minus signs really makes things a little bit silly. Is that? There's no minus sign in that here. Huh? There's no minus sign. We should get rid of this one? Wait a second. Okay, this is one, two. Yeah, yeah, you should get rid of that minus sign. Yeah. So this looks better? Yeah, that's, that's what he has. All right. Thank you. So now we have a formula for a single massive vector field. And the formula is phi i. I can be phi going from 0 to 3, but since we're talking about the spin 1 part now, or we're talking about spin 1 particles, the i equals 0 component is, is just automatically or wait a minute, no, I was wrong, I spoke too quickly. It's not automatically zero because you see, this is a four by four Lorentz transformation and so the space parts contribute to the zero component. So I takes, all, I is not, phi I is not zero for I equal to zero. So it's phi I of X and it's going to be phi plus I of x plus phi minus i of x. And we can think of this as phi plus i of x plus phi plus i adjoint of x. So it's automatically real. And this is going to be a sum on s from minus 1 to 1, minus 1, 0, 1, integral t cubed p, this usual square root, 2 pi cubed, 2 p 0, and then it's ei of p and s, a of p 
and S E to the I P dot X plus E star I of P and S A dagger of P and S E to the minus I P dot X. So that's the expression then for a vector field. Um, and of course, this is the positive frequency part, and this is the negative frequency part. And you remember we want things to commute at space-like separations, and so we have to uh, worry about that. So what is the commutator of phi plus i at x with phi minus k, say, at y? And we're always here concerned with x minus y being space-like. Well, as usual, um, we have the commutation relations. Well, it, it depends on, let me see, where did we sneak in the commutation relations? Okay, I'm sorry, I should have done commutator or anti-commutator. Commutator and anti -commutator. in other words, what we are assuming here is that A of P and S, A dagger of P prime and S prime, commutator or anti-commutator is delta S, S prime, delta Q, of P minus P prime. So we're assuming that about the creation and annihilation operators. And we're going to deduce that for spin one, we need to have commutation relations. So we assume these commutation relations. This is phi plus, this is phi minus. We do the commutator minus or the anti-commutator symbolized by the plus. And it's just the same as for spin zero, except for these extra factors of EI and uh, EK. And so this commutator or anti-commutator is an integral dQp over this square root again, 2 pi q, 2 p zero e to the i p x minus y, but now it's something that Weinberg calls pi of p, where pi of p is just these extra factors of e and e star. So pi i k of p is, and we have to sum from s equal to minus 1 to 1, EI of P and S, EK star of P and S. And it's the P and the S's are the same because of these delta, the chronic delta and the Dirac delta function. Now this this Okay. 
Now the question is, what are these? Um, what is? What are these pi's? Well, if we just look at these three vectors, you can see that this is a unit. They all have zero because we're at momentum zero. The the um, I don't know, spin. I don't know what to call these. The spin vectors have zero as their zero as their time components. The other three components are three orthonormal complex vectors in three-dimensional space. 